Hey, what's up? John McMillan, Sea Store Secrets, and I want to talk to you today about why price doesn't matter. And I know that's probably going to shock your system a little bit, and you're not used to thinking like that, but let me explain. Just bear with me. So, I did a product demo for a potential customer. And I'm always up front. I'm always going to tell anybody that I do a demo with exactly what to expect, exactly what the number one and two objections that I get price-wise are going to be. And I go through the entire process. So I do this demo. We're talking about the product. You know, I cook, fill the hot case up. The customer sells some of the product, they, uh, so they make some free profit off of the demo. And they have me highlight all the items that they need to order in their book. They're gung-ho. They're all about it. And then they order the items and they see the price. And it never fails whenever people see a price that seems out of whack, it raises flags, as it should. But keep in mind, I'd already explained exactly what the price was going to be, and I did it once, and then I explained what the cost was. You see, tenders is something that always comes up when, it, when you talk about price. There are essentially two or three types of tenders out there in the market, and there are what we call a jumbo tender, and they can literally be anywhere from 70 to 90 or 100 bucks, maybe even 110. Uh, that anywhere in between. And what's happening with those jumbo tenders is a lot of big, big competitors are using those because they know it's a hot button for you. They're using those to get into your store and make a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money, I mean, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars a case is the potential profit on those. And the the cost to buying that jumbo tender is size. The size can vary anywhere from one ounce to four ounces. Okay. Now, if the size can vary anywhere from one ounce to four ounces, that means you're gonna get a very inconsistent count in the case. So you might get 186 pieces today, you might get you know, 156 pieces tomorrow, and then you might get 194 pieces the next time. So if you're averaging, so if you're averaging and calculating your unit cost on a case of tenders that varies that much, at the end of the day, you're losing money. Because if you factor it on 194 count, then you're gonna get a certain unit cost, which is gonna be a little lower. And then if you factor it on that 160 count case or that lower case, and let's say that maybe it only has 10 less. Maybe it's 184. But if you factor your unit cost on that jumbo tender, then what's gonna happen is, is your price, your cost, is gonna go up and down all the time depending on what you get. And so, if you sell that, tender for 149 that unit cost today if it's say it's you know 50 cent you know you're gonna make 50 90 99 cent plus tax okay now if you get a case of tenders that has 10 15 20 less now all of a sudden your unit cost on that tender is going to go to 52 cent, 53 cent. It's going to go up. And so you're squeezing your margins, right? And you didn't do anything except keep buying that case. There's no price consistency there because there's no tender consistency there. Is that clear? Now, if my tender has the same cost and the same amount of tenders in it every single time, because the tender that I sell, we actually pay extra for the tender size consistency. Where a jumbo tender is going to range from about 
one ounce to four ounces, the tender that I sell will typically range from 2.4 to 2.6 ounces. So at the end of the day, the only chance that you get shorted in a case, maybe one tender to two tenders, just in the difference of the weight of that 40 pound case. Does that make sense? Hopefully you're following me. I know there's a lot of numbers here. But my point is, is I can tell you pretty much every single bag of tenders in my tender case is gonna have right at 32 tenders in it, okay? You do the math, 32 times eight, eight, 16, 24, it's 256 tenders. So you're gonna get 256 tenders in my case every single time, maybe 255, maybe 254 on a bad day. But the jumbo tenders can literally range in a difference of 10 to 20 tenders, maybe even more, because of that one ounce to four ounce variance. So if you look at the case counts on those two tenders and you, and you factor the unit cost, what I have found is my tenders only cost about 10 cent different. So you're talking about a 50 cent versus a 60 cent, okay? Now, is that high? Is that expensive? What does paying 10 cent more for a consistent tender do for your business? Well, I can show you a photo and I will probably make that photo the thumbnail for this video of when I took my son out to get some tenders and he got an order of four tenders. Three of them were the same size and the other one was almost half the size. That's what happens to your customers and guess what? We made fun of it, we've registered that in our mind and what it's gonna do is it's gonna remind me that the next time I go back to that place, if I get tenders, I'm gonna check my tenders first. And if I get three and a half tenders, I'm asking for another tender because I need to get the value of what I pay for and if I ask for four tenders, I expect four tenders. I don't expect three tenders and a chicken nugget, all right? So at the end of the day, when you have to start giving away tenders because of those misvaried sizes, that hits your bottom line. So now, not only has your count went down and your unit cost went up, now you're giving away free tenders. So now when you sell an order of three tenders, now you're selling three tenders plus possibly a free one. Because even your employees are going to say, I need to give you another one, that one's small. So now they're giving away a tender, they're giving away 50 cent. How many times can you do that throughout a year? You're gonna have to do it at least two to three times per case, okay? So that means for every case you order, you're giving away, and let's just let's just say one tender. Let's just say one tender is what you're giving away every case of tenders. So if you're going through two to three tenders uh, cases of tenders a week, that's three tenders a week you're giving away. So let's do some math here. Fifty cent times three times fifty-two. You're giving away seventy-eight dollars cost a year minimum. It could be triple that, it could be double that. You say, well, it's only 156 bucks. Is it? Is that what it is? Because you gotta remember your customers, if they're not happy, you're also gonna potentially lose business. So when you have a, a tender that is variable, that doesn't stay consistent, it's doing more than, than just saving you money. It's costing you money in the long run. So why is price important? Why is price important? Do you sell on profit or price? At the end of the day, you want a profit, right? So if you make 40%, you either make 40% on 50 cent or you make 40% on 60 cent. And let's just be honest, if you know anything about math, the higher the number, the higher the price, the more the profit is on that percentage, okay? So, 60 cent to make your customers happy? Is that, is that too much to ask, 10 cent? You're talking about a 30 cent difference 
on your tender cost in a, in a, in a three pack or a, in a three piece tender meal, but you're not giving away that one fifty cent tender. So on that one three tender meal, you actually came out 20 cents still in the good better than a jumbo tender, all right? You don't sell stuff out your door on price. You sell it on your retail, on your profit. So instead of worrying so much about price, you need to worry about quality and getting the right retail so that your market value bears your retail. So there's a lot of people out there that may think that 149 or even 169 is high on a tender. I bought, to test the price out, a tender from a company that's a C-store chain that focuses 100% on chicken, every store. I bought a tender and a corn dog, just to check the pricing. The tender, as soon as I got it, I noticed it was pre-breaded and frozen, it was not fresh, it cost $2.29 for one tender. Now there's some retail strategy involved in that probably trying to get me to buy more, which is why their tender price is high. Um, and that's a strategy that is actually a good strategy. Um, my corn dog was $2.19. I paid more for a frozen tender than I did a corn dog. And I guarantee you the corn dog was probably close in price. Maybe a little cheaper, maybe, depending on what they were serving. But my point is, is you don't make money on price. You lose money on price. When you price shop and, and forget about quality, that's where you lose. That's where your business loses, and that's where you create a situation where it's hard to keep loyal customers to your food service business. So let me ask you this question again. What's more important, price or profit? Because at the end of the day, if you can stop giving away free food because of the inconsistencies in, in chicken tenders, for example, if you can stop giving away free food, then you can control your profit. And if you can get that consistent price, which is what I offer, price is the same every single time, every single time, then what you do is, is you control all variables within your food service so that your profit is predictable and controllable so that you know what type of money you're gonna make. So I do apologize if this video was long, but it's one thing that I've noticed consistent everywhere in the marketplace. I get price objections on, on equipment all the time. Same thing. You wanna go buy a $1,500 to $2,000 fryer, you don't even think about filtration, which is the video I made that I shared the other day, I'm telling you what how good filtration is for you. You don't think about an auto lift basket, right? With a $2,000 fryer, you're not getting an auto lift basket. So if you're short on labor, which most of you are, you're trying to do everything with one employee, if you get busy at the register and you had dropped something down in that fryer and you don't have a digital timer, so now your timer doesn't go off, your basket doesn't lift, and now you've burned a whole basket of food, so now you're having to throw away product. Again, price objections. Are you, is it price you're worried about or is it cost? At the end of the day, price is less important than cost every single time. Because if you will, if you penny gouge great equipment and great product, and what you're doing is, is you're settling for less quality, cheap product that at the end of the day is going to cost you and your business more. So, just wanted to give you a little bit of an explainer on price versus cost, so you would understand. And you may disagree, and that's okay. But we have a ton of people out there using our tenders and using our product. And there's only two items that ever come into question for the most part on price. And guess what? Every single one of our customers are putting out the highest quality product. They're seeing higher profit margins than anybody. And it's because they're concerned about quality and consistency of product out the door so that they create long-term loyal customers. So I just want to share that message with you today. Hopefully you got something from it. And I'll see you on the next video.